السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وثانك وبرز سديوت الله سبحانه وتعالى May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those that came before him. Today uh, we are going to start a new episode. This episode will drive us through uh, talking about the lesson that we are going to learn from the noble chapter of the Quran, Surah Yusuf, or the stories of Joseph. The Quran, when we learn the Quran, It's not all about listening to the beautiful recitation of the Quran, but the most important thing is to understand the meaning of the Quran and ponder and practice over the same reminders that the Quran tells us. So, like I earlier said, that we are going to learn or we are going to have some lessons from the verse of uh, the, uh, the chapter, which is Surah Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the old Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب Surely indeed in the stories of the prophets there are some lessons for people that understand there are some lessons for people that want change there are some lessons for people that want to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah continues to remind us to say وَكُلُّ النَّكُسُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ That all the stories, all the stories of the prophets that are related to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to make firm your iman, is to make, to strengthen or make your iman stronger. And that's why these stories are reminded and are told. So when you want to strengthen your iman, when you want, when you want your iman to be strong, When you want to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us read about the stories of the prophets. Let us take time, read through, understand them, ponder over their meanings, and then practice them, which is one of the greatest virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. The greatest virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this uh, noble uh, nation, noble ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let us come, let us listen to these stories. And then from there, let us learn and change our lives. Who was Yusuf or Joseph? Joseph was the son to Jacob, Jacob. And Jacob was the son to Isaac or Isaac. And Isaac or Isaac was the son to Abraham or Abram, who is the father of prophets, the friend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we look closer, why have we chosen this surah? Why are we trying to learn lessons from this surah? It's because of the virtue and, and how this surah was revealed. This surah was revealed at the time when the Prophet وسلم, lost his beloved wife, a close friend, a close colleague that he would lean on, and his dear uncle, who was a father figure to him. When he lost them, he went to Taif. And he passed through a lot of tribulations. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his mercy, that he could not leave his most beloved prophet alone, but he came and revealed this noble surah. You can imagine this surah was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in its entirety. You know, when the surahs or in the chapters are revealed, they are revealed in a period of time. And then when the final Chapters are revealed, that's when they gather them together and make a chapter. But in this case, the Surah Yusuf, the story of Joseph, it was revealed in its entirety. And the reason behind the revelation was to comfort the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because of the hardship that he went through, because of the things that he was going through in the hands of his own people, that were trying to persecute him, that were trying to kill him, that were trying to do bad things on him. And this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this honorable chapter, the whole chapter to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give him comfort, to give him where to lean on, to give him hope that whatever you go through you should have patience, that any hardship that you go, they will come ease. And this was the reason why 
the prophet uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this honorable chapter the, to the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's why my dear respected brothers and sisters whichever hardship you are going through when you read the surah or this chapter of surah yusuf you come out smiling because there's a lot of comfort there's a lot of things that you find in this surah there are a lot of things that you find that are happening in our lives this same surah conforms to the happenings that are happening in our everyday life in this honorable surah so come along let us listen to the uh, verses of this uh, noble uh, uh, chapter of the quran and this let's learn some lessons what did yusuf say to his father إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين يوسف says to his father oh my dear father have seen eleven stars the moon the sun and the moon prostrating before me and what was the reply from his father قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على اخواتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا ان الشيطان للانسان عدو مبين the father replied to his son and said oh my dear son do not relate your dreams to your brothers lest they concoct against you lest they plot against you surely indeed a devil is an open enemy to human being So now this is now the first lesson that we are going to learn from these these uh, uh, ayats or these uh, chapters that uh, verses that have recited first one is father son relationship daughter mother relationship parents children relationship how do we relate to our children how do we communicate to our children do you think if uh Jacob or Jacob was not in good books was not communicating well with his son is was he going to relate his dreams to him this is where the question comes in how do we relate to our children do we sit them down find out what they are going through do we even mind to know what they are doing do we even mind to know which people they are mingle around with or do we do the talking and they do the listening we do the talking they do the listening and we do not give them chance to open up so that they tell us what they feel inside their hearts it is a big great responsibility being a father and it is for this reason that let us be there for our children let us not be busy with our work with our world lives where we forget our own family we do not know what is happening to our children we do not know what they are going through let's take time sit down with them find out what they want find out what is bothering them and then you come there as a guidance and give them a solution do you want your children to find solace or relief in other people that will destroy them for good no this will never happen this is the reason why we are having these reminders of these stories of the prophets so that we can change we can bring we can be the guidance that we are supposed to be to our families and be very careful who you relate your dreams to so when we have this time when we have time for our children when we sit them down and find out what they go through then you'll be a good father to them they will be able to open up to you do not let to do not let them to, to harbor a lot of things in their hearts if those things are too much for them and they happen to burst out we we'll have a big problem So let us be there for our children. Let us know how we relate to them. Let us know how we communicate to them. And children, let us have respect to our parents. Let us know how we relate to them. Look at the way Yusuf called his father, "Oh my dear father." And look at the reply that he got from his father, "Oh my dear son." This is the way that we need to relate these things. This is the way we need to communicate to our children. Let us not be the commandos in the house where the children if they see you they don't feel peace anymore they feel as if this is not their house anymore because of the fear that we are that you have imparted in them because you are, you are not there with them you are just busy shouting at them you do not want to listen to them you do not want to give chance to them therefore you are opening door for evil to come in to find people 
that will not actually impart them uh, with good advices, but they will give them a way that will take away our children who will go astray. So it is a responsibility that we have as parents that let us give our listening ear to our children, let us know what they go through, so that from there we guide them in the correct way, we guide them in the manner that will be pleasing to God, our Creator, as they grow up. That is the first lesson that we are learning from this noble verses of Surah Yusuf. And then the second lesson is, remember what the father replied to Yusuf. He said, Ya bune yala takususuru yaka ala ikhwatik fayakidu laka keida. Oh my dear son, do not relate your dreams to your brothers, lest they plot against you. Surely indeed a devil is an open enemy to human beings. So when we look at this, the father is trying to tell him that be very careful who you relate your dreams to. Be very careful who you tell expectation to. Be very careful who you tell your successes or progress to. Be very careful who you tell your job promotions to. Be very careful or be extra careful who you tell your plans to. Because some people are enemies of progress. Some people do not want to see any progress in you. Some people are very dangerous. Some people do not want to see you succeed in life, but they want to see failure in you. The moment you open up to them, they will smile at you. They will be happy with you, but inside their heart it is eating them up. It is eating them up to the extent that they will be thinking, they will have sleepless nights thinking what to do next, that they cannot let that happen. So let us be very careful as we open up to people. Let us not broadcast everything, whatever happens in our lives, to everyone, be, be, be it your close friend or a close directive, you don't know who hates you, you don't know how envied people are. Every blessing that you should know is envied. I repeat, every blessing is envied. Let us be very careful with the blessing that we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that let us not broadcast them, let us not open them anyhow to everyone that we think that they will be closer to us. It's because Enviness was the first sin. Jealous and hatred were the first sin that took part or that happened in heaven. We all know what happened to our father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. When uh, the devil was commanded by God to prostrate before him, he said, I cannot prostrate before somebody that you are created with clay and I'm better than him. That's where everything started. This is the more reason why when you have a hatred, when you have jealousy and the enviness in your heart, the devil capitalizes. He would, want you to, he would want you to take an action towards whatever you have been taught. That's why it is very important that let us not tell everyone what we expect to do. Let us not tell everyone whatever plans we have. Let us wait until it manifests on its own. Because the devil is an open enemy. The devil will disguise himself into a very good friend that will come to you so that you take an action. You take the next step. As you harbor that hatred in your heart, it will push you towards going somewhere that will try and close up everything for your friend. When we buy a new car, it does not be taken by happiness and post it on social media that I have this car. Otherwise, the evil eye is real. It will cut short your life. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, لَوْ كَانَ فِي شَيْءٌ يُسْبِكُ الْقَدْرِ الْعَيْنِ If there was anything that who take over your destiny, who take over whatever has been written to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the evil eye. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the evil eye is real. Let us always take extra care of that. Let us not be taken by this world, by the social media and everything that we have in our disposal to expose out our family and invite evil in our lives. When you post your newly wedded couple or your newly wedded wife, on the social media. Do you think everyone is happy by seeing that? Do you know how many people are seeing that? Do you know how many people have been crying to have those marriages? Do you know how many people have been crying to have that husband of yours you have? Do you know how many people have been crying to have that wife you are posting to say today I've married? Do you know what is going through their hearts? And then when you find difficulties in your marriage, you don't have children for so many years, you do, should not blame anyone but blame yourself because you open the door for the devil to come in. Like I said earlier, an evil eye is real. 
and it happens. Let us be extremely careful. Let us not be taken by this world, exposing everything that we have so that people should see. And this is the more reason why Jacob or Jacob advised his son to say, do not relate this to your, uh, to your, uh, to your brothers because they will plot against you. This is exactly what happens. People are full of enemies of progress. A lot of people are enemies of progress that do not want to see any progress in your life. So let us have patience. Let us wait until it manifests on its own. Whatever we have, whatever good we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us be very careful on who we relate to, on who we tell. Let us not think everyone is our friend. But a lot of people do not want to see any progress in our lives. It is for this reason why that let us be extremely, extremely, extremely careful that let us wait until it manifests, it comes out on its own, so that that's when people will see what, what uh, uh, blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And remember, like I said earlier, any blessing that is, any blessing that comes from Allah is envied by people. So it is for this reason, like I said, this is the first of each episode that will be reminding ourselves of this great surah as we go on, inshallah ta'ala, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us that we learn a lot and the most important, most importantly, we start practicing on these lessons because these are the things that are happening in our lives. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.